Look at this beautiful incubator. We have some eggs cooking in it, and even better yet, we have eggs hatching in it. What's hatching today? I think bull snakes. Yes, baby bull snakes. Yeah, all the little oh, noses. There's a little, no oh. Three out of four have pipped. That's so cute, a little nose in there. And then we have some cuts right there. Yeah, his nose, that's right, right there. Oh, he tucked it back. Oh yeah, that one's hiding. And then the egg over here. He sliced here. That one was out earlier. And then he sliced here. You can't decide what end to come out. Yeah. So that egg we still have to cut, yeah. which we'll probably do. Should we do that tonight? I see some slices on there like he's trying. We should probably do that now then if he's trying to get out. Yeah, probably. And this is the clutch from Shakira and Mr. Steal Your Girl. So this is actually half of their clutch because the entire, the, the whole clutch was in her enclosure over there. And once the incubator was done, we moved half of it over here and left half of it over there. And interestingly enough, those are not hatching yet, but these are. Yeah. So, huh, coincidence? I don't know. I'm more curious to see the success rate when we split them, we had two containers, each containing six, right at the beginning anyway, when they were laid. There were six in each container. By the time I split them, there were only four good eggs in each container. And all these, all four of these still look good, whereas only three of the four in the other in the cage over there are still good. So maybe that one was just not fertile, but uh, we'll see. So this video is going to encompass the entire clutch so we can learn how the experiment went from uh, incubating the whole clutch in that enclosure versus an incubator. Now, if you recall, this is Shakira and Mr. Steal Your Girl's second clutch. And their first clutch that hatched here at Snake Discovery is what told, taught us that both parents are head patternless because there were patternless babies in the, uh, in the clutch. Wait, 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 hang on. Before we continue this video, I want to clarify something quick. When the first clutch from Shakira hatched and we had surprise patternless babies, we got so many comments from people who reminded us that we had said we were going to actually pair orange Orange Creamsicle here, who is a male hypo patternless. Head white side too, which is cool. You guys reminded us we were going to pair him with Shakira, which would explain why some of the babies, explain why a little bit more, why the babies would be patternless. It would still be a surprise for Shakira to be het patternless though. Well, and what ended up happening was she had positive locks with Mr. Steal Your Girl first, like several positive locks. So we actually never ended up pairing her with this guy. So we forgot to mention that in the first clutch hatching video, but that is why we are still so surprised that Mr. Steal Your Girl is het patternless and Shakira is too. Uh, in regards to the exanthic morph though, someone brought up a really good point. There are, and this could explain why we did not get any exanthics, even though Mr. Steal Your Girl is het exanthic and Shakira is exanthic. There are two strains of exanthic That's in That's right, I forgot about that. There's the Balam exanthic gene and the Miami exanthic gene, and they are not compatible with one another. Mm. And we completely forgot about that. I, I knew that, yeah. but forgot about it until, you know, I, I forgot to look up his name. Somebody, so somebody told us it. Some, someone <laughs> sent us a very nicely written email reminding us about this. So you, you It wasn't somebody you screaming at us? No, he was very polite about it. So thank you to the guy who that was. Thank you for reminding us. That explains why we didn't get any Xanthics. Mr. Steal Your Girl is probably het for the other Xanthic traits. So for the rest of this video, since it's kind of incorrect how I'm talking about their morphs, just kind of take what I say with a grain of salt because this is the most up-to-date information. Yep. So. And and if you're confused, just come back to this part in the video and you can relearn it all again. Exactly. So now, with a better understanding of their genetics, let's go check out some patternless babies. So I'm wondering if there's going to be patternless babies here too. And as you can see, there's some like snake poop on here. I guess this is the downside to incubating eggs in with the adult because oh, she's just touching that. Yeah, well, I am right now. So it's part of owning snakes. We'll just put this on the ground so it doesn't touch the table. And oh, there's some spit bubbles. You're blowing spit bubbles. This is the Tauros. Remember we did all the uh, zodiac yep. signs? We had 12 eggs total. And let's see, the, uh, which one's this? I don't Gemini? know. Gemini? I think that one's Gemini. That one's Pipping. That one's 69. Yeah, <laughs> yes it is. Uh, I think this was... The Pisces? Maybe Pisces, I don't know. Oh, I can see a baby in there though. Look, I can, if I move it a little bit here, you can see it. Oh, I saw it moving around there. Oh, did you see it there? Um, I'll do it again. Tell me when you're ready. Yep. Oh yeah! Ah, oh, baby's There's moving around. In there. Yeah, here, little Pisces or whatever you are. Little sixty-nine baby. Yeah. Let's see if you're healthy. Let's uh, cut this open. 
And then I'm gonna take a peek and see what morph you are, because this pair makes patternless and normals. So are you patternless or normal? You are uh, really dark. I think I see spots down there, and I can see spots through the egg. Yeah. So you are a normal. Normal baby. All you gonna cut right. open the other ones a little bit more? I kind of want to peek, yeah. Let's see. You are... Oh, Gemini is... I think that's... Is that albino, or is that... No, I think that's patternless. Patternless throws that little bit of cream color. This one. Are you... Yeah, that's patternless. Are you sure it's not albino, too? I mean, we'll see oh, never mind. Out, but it I'm looks sure it's, pretty, it's pretty brown there. Yeah. Yep, I think that is patternless. Okay, there okay. you go. You can come out when you're ready. How about this little baby? I need like tweezers. You can do it. You only have to do two more. Her staff you... keeps stealing all her tweezers. Yeah, that's this, normal. Uh... Oh yeah, did you get to see that? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, yep. So we have a normal in there. I mean, if you can see, then I don't want to tear anymore. And then this one, I can't remember what symbol that is, but it's one of the zodiac M. symbols. Somebody who is this zodiac is like, ah, oh, why don't you know what I am? It's an M with a tail. An M with a hook. Yep. Right there. Okay. The so this is the M. fisherman's uh, zodiac. That's what it is. That's right. A mimmerman. I wonder if I can just open up the end here. You are. Oh, patternless. Patternless. Wow. Nice. All right. So we have two patternless, two normal in here Ooh, from the looks of it. see that one come out. Yeah. Is that one albino patternless that or one, just. That that's one a lot browner. Brown. This that one's one really. Doesn't. Hmm. I don't think they're strange. het albino. Are they? I think we would have seen it. Were there any albinos in her other no. clutch? No, it was just nor it was normals and patternless. Are you there. sure? Let Maybe me check. Maybe hypo. All right, so parents, here are the genetics, as far as we know. We are adding the genetics as we see more come out of their babies. Mom is exanthic, het patternless. Dad is hypoalbino, het white side, and het patternless. But I don't know. Maybe it could be a hypo, it could be albino. I feel like it's, hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just have to wait till it comes out. Yeah. All right, and then we have a, no, a whole other clutch, or a half of the clutch to hatch, too. So we'll see. All right, it's the next look, day. Look, look, look. The pretty one's out. There, oh, well, there's a couple out. He's oh. not albino. No. He's Is that the one we were wondering about? Yes. Okay. So yeah, just a normal patternless I think looks he's like. Just normal. Okay. So there's and then his oh, there's another patternless out. Yeah. Hello. Oh, you're really pretty. So, yeah, I think that one's just really pretty. Aww. And angry. And very angry. And then we have a normal right there. Yep. Aww, and then we have perfect. one more here to come out. Yep. Oh, another normal. You can see the spots in oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, has the other half of the clutch started hatching yet? The answer is... Nope, they're still cooking. Interesting, I wonder how much longer those are gonna take. Well, it's been three days since we uh, since the other half of this clutch hatched, and would you look at this? We have babies sticking their heads out! Oh, my cuties! Uh, so, success! We can uh, incubate eggs in an enclosure for the entire duration of the incubation period. That's awesome. So we have two of the three remaining eggs out. There were six in here and each container, which each had six originally, was down to four remaining eggs by the time we split up half of the clutch into the incubator and left the other uh, half in here. One more egg did go bad, so I don't know if that was just a coincidence or the fact that they were incubated in an enclosure. I don't think the enclosure would cause it because those two hatched and that one still looks good. So we have babies, success incubated entirely in a snake enclosure. All right, we're gonna check on you guys tomorrow when we're gonna cut that last egg if he hasn't pipped yet. And then we'll find out if you're normals or more patternless. Baby bull snakes. Okay, these are the rat corns. They're still cooking. Don't you eat me, Shakira. I know you're thinking about it, but don't do it. I'm just gonna steal your babies. Okay, and uh, we'll leave that there for now. There we go, perfect. Hey, babies. Okay. Two normals. Oh, they came out! Hi, babies! Wait. They were just pipped yesterday. Was there four eggs in here? There were three. That one's hatched. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's hatched, that's hatched. This one hasn't even pipped yet, so we're gonna cut that today to make sure he's doing okay. And all right, so we have two normals. Let's take a look. Goop looks good. Mm-hmm. Wow, jeez. Isn't this supposed to be, this, this is supposed to have some morphs in it, right? Some patternless, yeah. We had some patternless in the other half. That's right, you weren't here yesterday when these started pipping. Yep. So this one could be a patternless. Come on, patternless. Normal. Uh, yep, I see a lot of spots. Yep. yep, that's a normal. Okay, so we have three oh, normals. Sassy. You are sassy. Oh my goodness. This one, I do, are you okay? I think he's okay. I think I see movement in there. So we're gonna let him come out. Then we're gonna let them 
uh, chill settle. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, they won't settle. So interesting so far with this experiment. The half that was left in the enclosure took three extra days to hatch, probably because this dips in temperature every night. So their temperatures were a little bit cooler. And it has been found that snakes incubated at lower temperatures take longer to hatch, but they are bigger babies. Mm. So once this baby is out, we're going to compare this half of the clutch with the half of the clutch that hatched sooner, but was cooked in the incubator. And we're going to see if these are bigger or not. All right, it's been a couple of days and all the babies are now out. So we finally get to learn if it's true that lower temperatures for incubation will cause babies to take longer to hatch, but will be overall bigger babies. And we already know the these first part. These were lower, these were higher? These were lower, these were incubated in the enclosure at around 81 degrees during the day and closer to 75 degrees at night. Whereas this half of the clutch was incubated consistently 24 seven at 84 degrees. So three degree difference during the day and a little bit more at night when this half dipped down. So we already know the first half is true. This side or this half of the clutch incubated in the incubator hatched about a week, if I remember correctly, a week earlier than this half. So what ended up hatching was three babies of four in here and all four from the incubator. Again, this side was in the incubator. This side was incubated in the enclosure at a lower temperature. So what I'm really curious about is if this half being at a lower temperature will be bigger on average than this half. Now you might notice the first difference is that this half has pattern this. Genetics has nothing to do with the temperature or of incubation. That was just coincidence. I Although mean, we should just do the incubator now from now on to be the, the our luck was better. In the that's incubator. true. All four hatched in the incubator was only three of four hatched. Granted, well, also we got two out of the four patternless. I know it means nothing. Oh, but. yeah, but maybe it does yeah. create more patternless. Yeah, I doubt it, but uh, I don't think really <laughs> I don't think the temperature difference caused this the fourth egg in here to go bad. I think it would have anyway since two in each had already gone bad by the time we split them up. They are, are they, sticky. Are they more sassy? one or the other? Well, that's the other hypothesis or the yeah, other thought. Yes. People also think if they're incubated yeah. at a higher temp, they're going to be sassier. So that would incline or that would make me well, believe that this half should be sassier, but this is the sassier side. That could yeah. be coincidence too. I think there's two here that are sassy and there's two here that are sassy. Okay. So it's so about the I same. It's about the same. This is a small sample size guys. So we can't like judge everything, all the final results on this, but it's a good experiment for us to do. So let's find out their average weights. So what we're going to do is weigh all of the babies from the warmer half create or and then figure out the average weight for all those babies and compare it to the average weight of those babies yeah 23 grams right. 24 26 and 20. average size or average weight for the warmer half of the clutch is you add them all up and divide by four thank you <laughs> i would have never got that <laughs> average weight is 23.25 23 gram well round 23 grams okay now for the warmer half of the clutch, or sorry, the cooler. Now for the cooler half of the clutch. 25, 24, 24 25. 25. I bet it's gonna be 24.5. Yeah. All right, so the results are the half incubated at 84 degrees. Their average weight is 23 grams at hatching, whereas the half incubated at 81 degrees took longer to hatch, but their average weight is a gram heavier. So, I mean, this is a smaller sample size than I'd prefer, but... Yeah, three and four. Three and four, so. but that is consistent with the thought that uh, incubating at a lower temperature causes bigger babies. And I guess I, from what I've seen so far, I would believe it. So that's really interesting. That was a cool experiment that we did this year. I, I'd like to do it again with a bigger clutch, actually. Yeah, something that's got a ton of eggs. Yeah. And then we can also continue with the, uh, you're gonna bite. And then we continue with the, ow. <laughs> <laughs> to see if more, like is it consistent that more of them die in Oh, in, uh, in cooler environments. Yeah, yeah, I'd be cu curious about that too. But all I'm right, stuck. we are going to set up baby bins for these guys. baby bins are complete. You might notice that their water dishes don't all match, nor do the uh, hides because we're starting to run low on all of our supplies. Everything. And this, I think that's an aquarium plant, but yeah. a bull snake won't care. Yeah. So now we get to put them all in their baby bins. Baby, baby, baby. We oh, a in there. we have a honker. Oh, honker baby. Oh, there's a good honk. Oh, you're so cute. Oh my goodness. 
Okay, there you go. Bloop, bloop, and bloop. There's all our babies. Okay, should we put them in the baby rack? Sure. All right, babies. Into the baby rack, which is nearly full, actually. Yeah. All of them have cards and they're all full. Yeah. Thankfully, we are starting to ship out the babies now that they're becoming available. By the time this video is out, they're going to be all gone. I hope so, <laughs> anyway. Oh my gosh. We have oh. like bull snakes, uh, Madagascar giant hogs, rat corns, hog nose, uh, uh, one hog nose there. Uh, we have fox snakes, and the rest are all bull snakes. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot all, of bulls. That's a lot of babies, yes. So I think we should end this with at least one of the parents. All right. All right, Shakira. We're pulling Shakira out because Mr. Steely girl's kind of a jerk. He kind of, well. Oh, I guess she is too. She kind of is too. Hi, sweetie. Can you please not try to eat me? There we go. Okay. Just had to get her out of food mode. Hi, pretty girl. Oh my goodness. It's okay. That's right. Yeah, you are definitely not a program animal. I won't hold you for very long. But here is proud mom who helped incubate her own babies in yep. her own enclosure. Good job. You did a great job. You sat on- pooping all over them. Yes, thanks for pooping on them. You sat on your eggs and they hatched. So yeah, we have another clutch of patternless babies from Shakira and Mr. Steely Girl. So that is awesome. We have more to offer to people on the waiting list because a lot of people wanted to buy the patternless so I can reach out to them. So anyway, thank you for watching today's video. Get ready for a lot more babies coming out soon. We have so many babies right now yeah. of so many different species, several of which are first time species for us to be breeding here at Snake Discovery. So let us know what species you are most excited to see us produce, I guess this year. Maybe you can take a guess at uh, something new that we haven't announced yet. Uh, we have lots of surprises coming. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Patreon backers. And we'll see you when we have more babies.